Out of all the different Bible translations, which one should I read? That's our topic today on The Beat. Hey everyone, my name is Alan Parr. Thank you all so much for tuning into The Beat. Today we're answering the question, which Bible translation should I read? We got NIV, NLT, NASB. We got the Message Bible, the good old King James Bible. And so today I just want to talk about the three different types of Bible translations and the pros and cons of each. But before we get into these three, I want to make it very clear that there is no perfect English translation because the original Bible was written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, which means at some point these translators had to translate words from other languages into English. The problem with this is that there are approximately 5 million Greek words and only 1 million words in the English language, making it very difficult, if not impossible, to find an exact English word or phrase that would reflect the true meaning of the biblical text in Greek or Hebrew. Now with all that being said, the first type of translation that we want to take a look at is word-for-word -word translations. And these translations are normally written at an 11th or 12th grade level. And this is when the translators would attempt to take every single Greek or Hebrew word and translate it directly over into the English language, preserving the exact word order. The most popular translation in this group is the good old King James Bible. Now the pro is that it is very, very close and consistent with the original language that it was translated from, but some of the cons are, first of all, it was written or translated in 1611, which means that it is using words that are over 400 years old. So certain words like thee, thou, whither, comest, and restoreth are words that we don't use anymore in our English language, making it very, very difficult for people who are reading the Bible today to understand. Another Bible in this category is one of my favorite translations, which is called the Amplified Bible. Now the pro here is that it adds words in the these brackets to help you better understand the exact meaning of certain words in the Bible, which really helps you understand what the Bible is saying. Now the con is that these words are up to the interpretation of the person who is translating the Bible, which means that it is not a perfect interpretation. The second type of translation is what we call a thought for thought translation, and this is where the translators would take whole phrases and try to discern what is the general basic idea of what this passage is saying, and then disregard the actual word order and translate that idea into English language, making it easier for us to understand. Examples of these would be the New International Version or the New Living Translation. The pros are that these translations were written at a 7th or 8th grade reading level, updating many of the words to reflect modern language that we use today, making it very easy for the reader to understand. The cons are that some of the original meaning of the text is kind of watered down in an attempt to make it more understandable and more readable for the reader. Third and final translation is really not a translation at all, which is called a paraphrase. And here, the translators would take whole chunks of the Bible, not even really trying to translate it literally, but simply try to communicate the basic idea or basic thought in very, very modern and updated language. The most popular paraphrase that we have today is Eugene Peterson's The Message Bible. Now the pro here is that it was written at around a fourth or fifth grade level, making it very easy and interesting to read. The obvious con here is that a paraphrase disregards the meaning of individual words and they take liberties to add all sorts of other words to the text in an attempt to make it more readable or understandable. But the problem with that is, is that now when they add words to the text, it's now up to the interpretation of the translator. So what's the best translation to use? Well, the answer to that is the one that you enjoy reading the most and the one that you feel God speaks clearest to you. If you don't have a study Bible, I highly recommend the Life Application Study Bible, which comes in the New Living Translation, which is a translation that I personally use as my primary Bible because I have found it to be the best combination of accuracy to the original text and clarity in the sense that when I read from this translation, I actually feel like I understand what the Bible is saying. I would only use a paraphrase such as the Message Bible as a secondary resource only after I have studied from an actual Bible translation. Hey, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What has worked well for you? What translation do you read from? Which ones do you like? Do you agree with this video or disagree? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Beat.